should have dusted, dusted this thing off. Not that it isn't. Uh... Now dark smoke's rising, surely as a train, surely as a train, boy, surely as a train. Dark smoke's rising, surely as a train, and I'm on my long journey home. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill, two dollar bill, or two dollar bill. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill, and I'm on my long journey home. It's a too tall old Roger go by there. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill. Two dollar bill or two dollar bill. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill. And I'm on my long journey home. God bless you. Thank you, folks. What is bluegrass for music? Oh, God. <laughs> it's acoustic. Music, so it involved banjo, guitar, mandolin, bass. I think it's just it's traditional music and it's acoustic. Yeah. There's no drums. Like for me, it's the acoustic, and I never liked drums. Good talent, good voices, good musicians. Bluegrass is rhythm. It's just a, it's just words to rhythms. The whole thing in general is more friendly, you know, the people you, you mix and you get to know the different people and you do a lot of jamming with different groups. And it's just real nice folks and you meet a lot of nice people, you can bring your whole family and, you know, it's fun. Just so many different, you know, different people and, and everybody seems to get along. It's kind of a, it's kind of a universal language where music is anyway. But Something that gets into their souls or something, it's like a religion almost. It's earth music, it's, it's old traditional music and, and I think this law comes probably, it falls at a point where uh, the economy's good and people are saying, oh heck, you know, like I was saying about Jim O'Neill saying about the sales of Bill Monroe records being down there in the early 80s, well times were good and, uh, and people didn't need this, this togetherness feeling, I guess, and now the world is quite unsettled again, and uh, I think, you know, you're going to see a, uh, an upsurge in sales of bluegrass and things that uh, have a traditional background to them, a traditional roots. Little daughter, will you make her understand? Oh, Parson. Will my soul pass through the Southland? Then thy rebel soldier die. Somewhere along the line, uh, I think in '76 was my first bluegrass festival. We'd heard it before, but uh, got the bug then. It's 18 years since this one 18 started. this one here, but they really get going with 15, 16 years ago. People are taking big interest in it. Yeah. yeah. And catching on bigger every year. How long is it going to last? Ah, forever. <laughs> Bill Monroe and his brother, I forget his brother's name, but they, they you ever call them the Monroe brothers, and there was a ton of bands. I mean, like um, uh, the Carter family, and, and they all played uh, traditional country music. And, uh, and then Bill was kind of looking for stuff, and finally he met a guy named from North Carolina by the name of Earl Scruggs, and he knew he found what he wanted to, like this combo thing, and it just got called bluegrass. And that's when it started. I would say maybe early 70s or mid-70s it started in Nova Scotia. And it just grew from there, and then New Brunswick got hold pretty well around the same time. But Eddie Poirier moved home from uh, Ontario back in the 70s, and he was a great influence to bluegrass because he'd been into it for a while up in Ontario. He formed bands up there, and it did take long to catch on. Well, what a bad thought, some wonderful morning, just to hear Gabriel's trumpet sound. When I wake up, when I wake up, to sleep no more, to sleep no more, rise to meet our blessed Redeemer with a bad shot on the ground. When I wake up, when I wake up, to sleep no more. Wake up. What a glad morning, sleep no more. Choose a 
my door. Happy I'll be over in glory. Heaven's my joy. Tell me a story with the redeemed of all the ages. Praise the one who my door when I wake up. When I wake up, sleep no more. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. When I wake up, when I wake up, I wake up no to sleep no more, and leaving behind tears, troubles, and sorrow, bound for that city upon high. When I wake up, when I wake up, to sleep no more. When I wake up, what a glad morning! Sleep no more. Choose a door. Happy I'll be over in glory. Heaven's bright show. Tell me a story with the redeemed of all the ages. Praise the one who my and I'm from West Virginia. I was born in West Virginia. Actually, I was born in East Virginia and then moved to West Virginia. It's like that old song. Um, <laughs> but um, the music was just dying out for just people that wanted to sit around and play. If you were uh, very commercial, you were okay there. But it, uh, So we started coming up here and we found people that wanted to play music. And they welcomed us even though we were from the States. And uh, so we finally decided to settle here. I don't know, I think bluegrass has got a lot more soul, you know. People actually get in there and feel it, sing it, have a good time doing it. Whereas in country music, it seems all contrived. It's all planned out ahead. And, uh, you know, when you come to a festival like this where people are just sitting around singing, people meet each other, and they, they just blend with each other really well, I think. You feel, you feel a part of it, whereas in country music, you're, you're an outsider. You're there to consume, that's it. You're not going to participate. Love that, love that country music. Country music. Do, do you love country music? Oh yes, you love bluegrass? and bluegrass too. Country music uh, <laughs> ain't country no more, right. and bluegrass is uh, pretty well kept to the what it is, you know. What what happened to country music? Well, it, uh, I think they well they're in it for the money. At one time they they never allowed no. Uh, Electrified instruments in the in the band, and, and now they do. It used to be all acoustic. Uh, in bluegrass music, it's not like country. It's not like pop. You don't have to be 25 years old and a pretty face. Not saying I'm not a pretty good looking fella, you know, but, but you know, you can be an old man or an old woman and sing a good song and people like it. You can do it in bluegrass and you can make it if you have the love for it and you've got the song. It's, I think it's because of the people wanting the old country mixed in with bluegrass. The new country is not big with the young people around here. Okay. And especially over in the country. They like the old country, the old George Jones stuff and Merle Haggard stuff. And they mix this in with the bluegrass. And well, thank it, uh, a lot of that. people call it the cross country grass to a certain extent because of being a bit of the old country in it, but it's, it's catchy. Now country rocks, but bluegrass rules. <laughs> So in the States, the bluegrass music uh, tends to be a lot more urban phenomenon, whereas here it's a more rural phenomenon. Of course, this is a more rural country. They're not big cities, but uh, you can go to a, a bar or you could go out to a, a, a Cayley or a dance hall, and they'll be playing all kinds of music. It's, it's just really good, whereas you could go to the Washington, D.C. area, where my brother is, uh, it's all just so uh, formal. We started to attend festivals here not so much. I still travel to the States and, and Ontario and places. But then we started to travel around here and uh, soon came to find out that really uh, there was no need to go uh, to Ontario or go to the States. Uh, the music was just as good here. Yes, it's a lot more uh, country oriented and more down home than the typical Kentucky bluegrass type thing in the South. Uh, uh, we find a little bit of a Acadian flavor in the music here that sets it apart I think. Like right here from New Brunswick and even in uh, some of the musicians from Nova Scotia they could go anywhere and play with any uh, 
uh, bluegrass band in the world. They're that good. So though there's no real money in it, there's guys there that, that some of the most fantastic musicians you've ever heard in your life. I, I was involved in the International Bluegrass Music Association, which is based out of Kentucky. Uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia is a hotbed. Uh, this side of is bluegrass is growing fast, although it's growing fast everywhere. We're always bringing U.S. bands up here, and which are wonderful, but we have so much of our own talent. Yes. That just go to the ECMAs and we'll see maritime talent. My favorite part of bluegrass music is jamming. Well, it's just where a whole bunch of people get together and jam outside instead of on stage. Like one person could start here, and there might be 15 all join them at the same time. Is that unique to this uh, type of music and, and this type of camp out? Oh, yeah. Jamming. I'll be honest, when the music is done, jamming at night. <laughs> everybody gets together. If you're playing fiddle or guitar, mandolin, bring it on, and everybody jams. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Most of the bluegrassers, that's what they, they love about the festivals, is the, uh, the live jamming after, after the stage shows have finished. Just, I'm used to play f myself. Natural instincts. I'm, well, used, I I, I'm used to play f just myself, and you just come along. That's and, just music. Yeah, it's, it's just perfect. music. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Sounds like a melody. What was yeah. your name, anyway? I'm Ivan DeVoe. John Sands. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I would like to teach and be able to give my gift to everybody else, I guess. The more people I can, the best it is. So hopefully when I'm done, everybody else can pick it up. Here you have the opportunity to, to talk to some of these professional musicians and maybe if you're lucky you even get to jam with them. But if you go to a theater, chances are you're not going to get a, get a jam or even talk to these people once the stage show is over, they're gone, you know. <laughs> Whenever they wanted to know something, they'd come and see us. Although we was just old, old fellows, you know, older than them, they come and see. Uh, they say, "Well, how do you do this? How do you do that?" You sit there and show them, show them every step that they need to know, and then they, wherever I stop learning, these kids started. <laughs> There's 14 bands this weekend and you can walk to their campsite and they'll all talk to you and they'll all sit down and you're a banjo player yourself, they'll all say, yeah, come on, join in, let's have a tune, you know, which, which is what it's all about. Okay, we gotta go. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. When I started, I started at 10. But when I was about 15, 16, I started attending some of the live festivals and uh, there was only maybe four or five guys my age that were actually picking guitar and banjo and all that. One of them was Frank Doody. Uh, it's remarkable the amount of young youngsters, 10 years old, 11 years old, playing 
stuff that I'm learning now on the fiddle. It, it's it, remarkable. The influence, I think, maybe with the younger wow. people has caught on more in New Brunswick, Moncton and Bucktush area, and Rogersville. They seem to have a great more influence on the young people playing the grass. I think kids are, uh, they're just wonderful. And they, they're great. Uh, if they're, they talk right, they're as good as, you know, uh, the grown ups. Some are better. And the stuff they're playing is, is real good and, and you know even they they play different types sometimes they stay I see that they stay mainly to the roots <laughs> Mom's stuff. from the boondocks, so <laughs> that's all they did out there was <laughs> play bluegrass. And there's other players, you probably met a, quite a few over this weekend, that are really young and really had the spark. You can see it in their eyes, like, they're, yeah, let's, let's go, you know, let's go jam. Why do you keep me down? playing Devin? Since two years. <laughs> two years? years. You've been playing a mandolin? No. <laughs> yeah. How old are you, baby? Six. Anything I do, he tries to get better at it so he can put me out of business. That's what he's doing. Do you think a lot of uh, other people in the bluegrass community bring their kids up uh, musically, you know, to kind of continue on the traditions? Yeah, I do. I see a lot of it around. Like, a lot of families come out, they have their children with them all the time. And I take my, whenever I take my kids with me, the wife and I, we take them out. They get to uh, go out and play with the other kids and stuff like that. And they come back and Every time we practice or something, he comes over and sings, and you'll see the other uh, young people, the kids there, they'll be out singing right along with you. They, it's a family thing, and it's, I find it good. When the walls fall down? And there's another and there's another one. I don't know what it's called. Yeah? But Sam's tool. It's really good? Yeah. Are you are you gonna play in a band when you get older? No. No. What do you wanna be when you get older? A paleontologist. <laughs> 
Caden Bryant and his grandfather is part of Fred and Floss, Vans Bryant, so I'm keeping him back here so he doesn't uh, take the stage away from his grandfather. <laughs> they fill that hole in the bottom of the sea. Thank you, sir. What we've noticed is uh, a lot of younger people are starting to appreciate the, uh, the natural sound of acoustic instruments. We're not sure why. Maybe it's because of the some people are, are saying, "Well, Old Brother I Doubt movie brought you know it, it on the mainstream." They yeah. go to more parties and they want to hear the Old Brother Wear Out Thou yeah. um, features on the CD and stuff. We got to learn those. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fly away, fly away, oh glory! Yeah. Brother, where are they? We've not seen We're it. The only I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny, I'll tell you a funny story about that. Our daughter was raised on the Stanley brothers and the Carter family, the Lilly brothers. You know, saints. Right? It's absolutely secular saints. But of course, being a daughter and generational thing, she couldn't. You know, she, she wouldn't, wouldn't give you a sack of dead flies for that stuff. Then somebody took her to see, or she got the video of "Oh Brother, Where Out There Art Thou," and she said, "You know, there's some good mu music in that. Have you ever heard of the Stanley Brothers?" <laughs> yeah, dear, we were trying to inoculate you with that for about 11 years. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Delayed reaction. So. How long ago did I make this? Actually, I don't know because right in the middle of it you fell and broke your wrist. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. so. <laughs> Completely homemade, even to the resonator and the spider bridge and the whole works. Ah, good old bluegrass standard or something. <clears throat> now I wish that I was up on Rocky Top down in the Tennessee hills. Well, this here's a homemade, homemade stand-up bass, I guess. It sort of evolved out of the old wash tub bass and uh, uh, just a natural progression, I guess, is probably how every, all this stuff kind of works. The, the gang that I was hanging around with, just up the hill here, uh, they, they, they were doing wash tub wash tub bass and uh, of course you only got one string and a stick that you can change the tension change the pitch and I was quite you know I said geez if a person can get that kind of a sound out of a uh, um, out of a wash tub and a stick and a piece of string I mean how much more do you got to get to go how much farther do you got to go to get a better sound so so I was sitting around and I had thought about it for a while and uh, so I just one evening I sit down I split a barrel in half and Put a top on it, and uh, it took about two or three evenings just to kind of throw it together, and uh, and of course you know you wouldn't have a clue how it was going to work, eh? I have 
have a number of bandolins in St. John, a few in Fredericton. Uh, I've sold some in Moncton, and some are in the States, some in Western Canada. This is some of the wood that I use. This is uh, uh, local red spruce here. Over there, there's uh, some local maple. Uh, there's curly maple in there, a little bit of bird's eye. This, this mandolin has uh, Engelmann spruce top. It has uh, local bird's eye, one piece back here. The wood is not quite as stiff, so it helps the tone. I, I find uh, uh, the softer the wood, the better the tone. I learned that you can't reinvent the wheel. For instance, if you wanted to build a guitar, a bluegrass guitar, you take a Martin and then build it and then, then try to uh, modify that a little bit. It's the same with the mandolin. So I increased the heights of the sides and the body shape just a little. And uh, those things work, but the drastic changes don't work. It's, st it's starting to change now. I find it's, it, it, it's uh, when I first got into the, the, the bluegrass part of the music, because I wasn't always into bluegrass music. I got into bluegrass music in 1979. And at that point, I, I guess you could say there wasn't very many original songwriters, like not in, not in uh, the Maritimes or in Canada for that matter. But now it's starting to change and there, there are more original songs being, being written and accepted by the audience and it's, uh, the, the groups are starting to recognize now that's really the way that to expand your horizons. There's a guitar! There's a guitar! Yeah? And it's all standard! Woo! There's a mandolin! There's a bass! For the bean horse? And there's a banjo! Where's the banjo? Oh, the banjo's gone! It's <laughs> a sound guy! <laughs> and a guitar! It's the, the banjo and mandolin. Uh, the fiddle and guitar and upright bass. To me, that's a, the epitome of uh, bluegrass. Um, the dobro and other instruments have been added since. Lives 
my sweetheart of the mountain. She's my little Georgia Rose. Well, come and listen to my story. A story that I know is true. But a little rose that blooms in Georgia. With here a thorn and a heart so true. Way down in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Way down where the tall pines grow Lives my sweetheart of the mountain She's my little Georgia Rose Baby, now it's quite a lady The one her mother could extend Way down in the Ridge Mountain Way down where the tall pines grow Lives my sweetheart of the mountain She's my little Georgia Rose Yes, she's my little Georgia Rose yeah. What is it you do on well, that? Well, I'm a computer technician at the University of Prince Edward Island. I sell real estate. I'm a fisherman. A uh, self-employed carpenter. Uh, my occupation is steel worker at the Georgetown shipyard. I'm a house painter. I was a machinist the best part of my life. Uh, it attracts, this, this type of music attracts a ton of people. Uh, like there's doctors, lawyers, uh, priests, uh, people, uh, yeah, all kinds of people from the ministry, yeah, yeah, you know, church ministers and stuff like that. Eh? So uh, in the summertime, we, we try to get, you know, 10 to 12 festivals in the summer. Well, pretty well every weekend we're gone, so. How many festivals would you say you guys have gone to in the Maritimes? Most of them. <laughs> How many festivals do you think there are in the Maritimes? Well, we have a sheet like this of a listing. I couldn't guess, really, but there's a great many. Well, I don't know if I'm coming for 27 years. 27 years? I don't know if it's the women or the music. <laughs> I think it's a little of both. It's a, it's a vibe, it's a feeling, and uh, you get it. And the best thing is to go to a Bluegrass Festival and experience it, because somebody could tell you about it for days and years. And uh, if you go to a good Bluegrass Festival, even though it's raining out, you still get a vibe and a feeling you know, that it is a good festival. Okay. And you say this is the first festival you've ever been coming to? Well, to, to the bluegrass, we've been going to the Fiddlin' one, but never to this right. one. Are they different? Yeah, it was a lot more people on this one. More, so, yeah. more in the bluegrass? Yeah, the... right. Okay. Now, are, are you a player? No, I don't play, no. Just a fan? Yeah. <laughs> Your most valued memory out of all the years that you've been coming here? <laughs> Go ahead, ladies. Bad, Just about bad. freezing my feet last year. <laughs> When it was a little frosty outside, <laughs> the maid way to the bottom of the tent. <laughs> Other than that, it was great. Five, five below zero, and we woke up last year in the morning, frosty. Sunday morning. This this time of year. Yeah. What exactly are you cooking up here, sir, this morning? We're having bacon and eggs with toast. Our favorite breakfast when we're camping at Bluegrass Festival. What's your fa favorite element of the, the whole Bluegrass Festival experience? I uh, know between camping and listening to music. Bacon. Oh yeah, we gotta have our bacon. This this is coffee. <laughs> coffee this morning. Don't lie to her. What time of the day is it right now? What time? I'm I'm hoping Breakfast it's around time. like uh, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. How how late were you out uh, at the? Uh... Two o'clock, I think. Two o'clock. Yeah. God. Here you go, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Now that's bluegrass hospitality. That's yeah. right. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the bluegrass diamonds. They're a great bunch of people. Yeah, yeah great guys, yeah. From Rum Cook? of course, yeah. 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 Real gentlemen. They're real nice people, yeah. Are you taping that? <laughs> we, uh, we're fortunate to be real busy. We play every weekend. Like this weekend here, we run a festival. We, we're playing tomorrow. And next weekend, <laughs> Thursday night, we're heading for the States. And then the weekend after that, it's in Booktouche and on the island, Nova Scotia. 
constantly on the road. Do you see the same people at every festival, pretty much? Uh, in the maritime, you basically see all the the same people. Yeah. yeah. But when you when we go out of province, like in the states, then it's different faces. But if you go to three or four festivals in the states, it's basically the same as in New Brunswick. It's the same people that go there. And it's like a big family gathering. So it's big. It's the community aspect. Yeah. Is yeah. Is it that on? What I like about it is these festivals are the. It's just a real family event, and it's you know there's no. Um, I don't know violent stuff like you see at some other festivals. You know different other kinds of music, and it's just real nice folks, and you meet a lot of nice people. You can bring your whole family, and you know it's fun. When, once you get here, it's like a big family, and if it's a, a true bluegrass festival, you won't hear of anything out of the ordinary going on, like uh, fights or brawls or whatever in, in the field. It's a very family-oriented uh, event. This one purpose is bringing everybody together, so you're seeing people you haven't even seen for like five or ten years, and it's just, I'm having a great time. What, what, what have you seen as a, as a difference between the, the bluegrass scene back in the 70s and what it is now? Oh, big difference in uh, campers. Yeah. When I started out, it was just uh, mostly had tents and uh, bands and half tons with uh, campers on it. And, uh, very few motorhomes. Now there's very few tents. But the, the biggest change I've noticed that even when I first come around, a bowler was a good sized trailer and it was everything was tents. And now look, they're all motorhomes and so that that's the biggest change that I found. That's your bus. That's my bus. The Rebel Soldier, which is a famous bluegrass song, and the bus is gray and it's old and it actually has a bullet hole in it. So. Did you put that bullet hole in no, there? No, I didn't. But it was one of my good friends. One of my good. One of my good friends did. Yeah, that's a 1969 Chev, and all its glory. People uh, just love that sound of acoustic music. They can go in their kitchen and, and get a few friends over with the guitars and sing, and everybody can have a great time. You don't need a lot of uh, setup. You know, you just pull out the guitar and start singing. Bug actually went to my first festival in uh, Breakneck Mountain in 1993 and seen uh, Danny Maye for the first time and I was I was hooked then. <laughs> I, think, I guess. Uh, I guess I grew up with old time country music around the, the kitchen parties and, and the, the old time music. Really, really enjoyed it. So it was a natural, natural step. I just uh, love the music for years, I guess, and I uh, really appreciate how good these uh, musicians are with all the acoustic instruments and uh, nothing plugged in, top drawer. I got a, I guess I got a five string banjo for Christmas in 1992 and uh, haven't looked back, you know, just gone to a couple of festivals, started playing in a band and ever since then just been, here I am. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah, pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I guess I've been, uh, 
I've been around music all my life. I had so many chances to learn to play instruments since I was a little boy, and I never really learned to play guitar until maybe 10 years ago. And then, but I've loved music, and I've always learned to sing or tried to learn to sing since I was little. So it just hooks on you, and you can't let go now. The secret about bluegrass is you got to love it to do it. You know. See, I've got 5,000 mosquito bites on me under these clothes to prove it. There is just no doubt about it. In my mind, bluegrass is the sweetest sound in the world. You love the music. It's great music. This year, you've got to let the people sit down and listen. Give them a chance to listen, put them in the right spot. See, now you sit there and listen to this and tell me what you think. And most people will come back saying, I didn't think it was that good. And the storms so violently sweep You're drifting too far from shore Drifting too far from the shore You're drifting too far from the peaceful shore Come to Jesus today let him show you the way You're drifting too far from the shore Today the tempest rolls and the clouds overshadow the sky. Sure, death is hovering now. Drifting too far from the shore. Drifting too far from the shore. You're drifting too Jesus today and let him show you the way you're drifting too far from the shore